what the heck are these? Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. Welcome to part two of the incredible location of what used to be the Europe's largest munition plant and storage area that the Germans created. And if you haven't, I will show you part one here. Where it says more, click that link, watch it first, get the full context, come back here, and we're going to show you even greater things. And if you spend some time watching the video in full and don't skip, it is greatly appreciated. But now, let's continue this fantastic walkabout. As you've seen in this part one, you could see that the Germans meant business here. And they really seriously wanted to protect their investment, the munition plant, the munition storage, the muni position. And you see the mounds that are characteristic for protecting the next building and all of that. But there is also a lot of this. There's a complete fire protection system in the ground. And this is a post that tells you where there's a crane that you can open, connect the hose. And that is because with hundreds of buildings doing munition work, storage handling, of course, something can happen, could happen. And as I said to you in part one, something did happen once here. And if you haven't seen that part already, as I said, do it because you'll understand so much more. It doesn't hurry. You can come back here and uh, enjoy more. So this is a completely blown up structure. And I know there was three accidents here, three reported accidents. Uh, what could have been when the Red Army transformed over to the Soviets, USSR and the communists, they were here after. Could this be something that happened when they were here? We never know, because this whole, whole area was totally forbidden area for anyone except the military. I'm overwhelmed with the numbers of structures here. And you saw in part one the incredible building where they handled the munition with the actual tools still on the benches. That is crazy. Here again, you have a barrack in very, very bad state. But once upon a time, the German Third Reich, they planned this. As I said in part one, the rearmament of Germany after World War I it started almost immediately after World War I because of the humiliation that the Germans felt and then the different kind of politician, politicians came in. We all know what happened when the Nazis and Hitler came to power. They manned up and geared up and they really knew that we needed munition, munition, munition to go about to do what they did. So that is why you find all of these features here in the forest. We have found two underground bunkers in the area. One contains something that we couldn't show, but yeah, they are from the Russians, the Soviets. They came in here and they did their stuff. But we are mainly interested in what the Germans constructed and built. And we are in this area where the first original buildings were and still are. And that is what is most interesting. So that is one mound that keeps the blast in from the structure on the inside there. And we're going to continue to go across a couple of more mounds. And I hope that we're going to find more of the munition production plant, actually. There's so many roads in here, by the way. Me and Eagle Eyes, we want to say a massive thumbs up and thank you. Thank you, everyone. To all of you who watch, subscribe and comment, it is so appreciated. And as I said, if you watch the videos in full, you are supporting us so much. And also, all our team members on Patreon, thank you, thank you, thank you for your very, very kind support that enables us to go out here. But also thank you to all of you who support us by donations on PayPal. Also, we have this little super thanks feature here. That's a very simple way for you to help us out, to put some gasoline into the fuel tank, go out and find even more incredible locations. Yes, your support is greatly appreciated. And I can promise you, 
We wouldn't have been able to find these locations and go to them, travel so far. And in a way, as a father, I want to say a personal massive thank you for enabling me to take my son out, teach him this, let him have experiences that no other kids has. And in that way, I hope that he can use that in his future life to create a better world. But here you can see again, these places are really trash, some of them. And uh, this is another, I don't know, storage plant, production plant. But since 1991, two, three, a lot of things has happened. Here it seems like someone has decided to collect ceramic toilets everywhere. I don't know why, but somehow I feel it's scavengers or looters or whatever. And that is basically sad because a lot of the history that used to be here should actually be here so that people can have a better understanding of what happened. But I can see in this case, it didn't matter. They took what they could get. And in a way, well, that's another side of story, oh, of history. That is also a munition box for a huge, I don't know, shell or something. Here is something different. Actually looks like a loading ramp. And I do, s what? There was a train coming here, Eagle Eyes. This is a loading ramp area. For two trains. For a train. Indeed, this is the sleepers. And that is why you most likely have this loading ramp here. Wow, yeah. I think there was actually a separate, you can see that, everybody who knows railroads knows this. These are highly recognizable, definitely. And they even, they didn't even take them off when they left the, the Soviets, but I guess they were here when the Germans were here as well. And that is interesting, then we know the proportions are even greater. Because as I said, when you have one of Europe's largest munition plants, you need to come and get the stuff in and out easily. Oh yeah, Eagle Eyes found one of these. I've seen these before. These are driven down into the sleepers. And they are right there. How cool would it be to stand right here on top of that mound and do like this? Boom, 1942, let's say that. August 1942. What happened right here? Where were Hans, where were Karl and the Jonas and Andreas? Where were they? What did they do here? What was their service or duty? And did they do it free will? Did they do it because they had to? I don't know. And what about Ivan in 1989? Ivan was longing for home, but he had to be here. He had to take care of what came out of these wagons and had to be here every day, maybe for like half a year, before he could travel home on a train to Moscow in his tiny little apartment with his wife. And then he had to go back. These are the stories that I always think could have happened. And I would wish so much to be able to wind back time and see those moments. Look at that. The tree has grown completely right up to this thing here. Wow. The tree just says, my property. Yeah, it kind of says, this is my place. Go away. Holy bananas. This is a huge building. Could it be a train station? What the heck? No, I can see a pattern here. As you can see here, something was taken in and out of this hallway here because you have protections on the side of this. That meaning something heavy was rolled in and out from here, maybe through that door. And maybe Ivan or Andreas, they pushed a wagon here with uh, Andreas pushed the 88 millimeter flak gun munition and Ivan, he pushed the 150 millimeter Soviet grenade launchers out here, put them onto the wagon and they drove off with it. And they don't know where it ended, but maybe some of it ended hitting the allies or maybe 
the Soviets used them wherever they were. This is so cool. And it's definitely a incredible location to, to dig into more. And then you can see here also, you have this metal bar on top of this ramp, loading ramp, and another hole. This one is marked with number 10. And we have seen numbers all the way up to 49, I think. There's another storage hole. Maybe this is just a temporary storage hole for all the material that goes with the train, or maybe even comes with the train. So maybe this is temporary storage under the roof. Look at that. Yeah, it's messed up. And they put it here for a few hours and then it was pulled into the different positions where they were to assemble the cartridges, the gunpowder, the tips, whatever. It is almost surreal to be at this location for the one fact that it never ends. It absolutely never ends. And we have seen at least 40 structures now. And just more and more comes up. And this looks like it's a second. So you have railroad actually being here as well. So now we're far down away from the other storehouse where they had the loading ramp. So now you have a second trail coming here. How cool is that? So we are at this historical German munition plant. And some of you did something really cool for us. You did specific donations to our Eastern Front road trip. And I said, I'll bring you along in a very special way. And in this way, I have made you historical because all of you, you said, hey, we're gonna help History Hunter and Eagle Eyes onto this road trip. And we're gonna see so much when they come back. And indeed you are, because thanks to you, we are here at one of the largest munition plants in Europe during the days of the war. And you guys and girls, you helped us tremendously out. And this, we thank you for. So thank you for your very, very kind support. And uh, it enables us to go out and do even more. Thank you for the kind donations. Wow. You gotta see this. This is crazy big. I'm really much looking forward to see what's inside this one. We can enter. Eagle Eye said, let's see if we can find an entrance here. And there is an opening. Yeah, it's the same. Yep. But also there. And those? No. It is definitely the same. I don't know what this structure is for, but somehow it's got something to do with the production of the munition. And what is going on? Why is there a hole here uh, in the floor? How did it do that? My goodness. It looks like someone blew a hole, to be honest. And there should be a staircase here. We're gonna go up this stair here. We're gonna see if we can find the same features in this one as we did in the first one. We're gonna go all the way to this top floor. Yeah, it is the same. Holy cow. What the hell? Every floor here is busted. What is up there then? That is not busted. Somebody must have practiced to blow up something here. I'm 100% sure of it. Because this, you cannot do that with just a tiny little thing. So I'm guessing they actually blew up a hole, maybe testing or trying something after the war. Absolutely crazy. And each and every window is broken. Not one single window has been left alone. And I get it with this type of vandalism that is being performed by 
so many youth today. I don't believe it. Why there's so much vandalism? Because I don't know why you have to destroy so much. I'm destroying. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! It is saved. Are you kidding me? Another one. There. there you go, guys. You are really good at spotting things. I was starting to wonder why are all of these broken? And it seems like somebody had so much fun. But as I said, I don't get it. Why the youth, very often the youth do that. I don't get it. Why? This is the outside. And uh, this is where you could spot Carl and uh, Andreas and Jonas doing their stuff and later Ivan and all of the Soviet Union soldiers. What the heck are these? Furnace? Furnace? Yeah, maybe. These were not in the other building. Where are they? No. What are they? So big. So big. Hmm. Yeah, what are they? Someone help us. Because <laughs> I surely don't know. Is it hoists to some? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, it's a conveyor belt. There were things laying on these. But it doesn't go. What? I'm going to check inside here. Yeah, it's definitely a conveyor belt. It's a machine that carries something around here. How is that possible? And hold, hold this, Igalais. Come and hold this. Hold this there. I'm going to catch something down here. Yep. That's exactly what it is. This is what held the tip for the shell tips. Okay, what shell? And you see down there? See there? Yeah. There's one with rubber on. Let me see if there are more of them. Yeah, there's one there. I'm gonna go to the other side. These are the proof that maybe inside here, if you hold the flashlight, Eagle Eyes, I can show it to them. Yeah. Take that up. Yeah. Are you kidding me? See that? This is the piece where the shell end casings laid in this munition plant. If you hold that piece like that, I'm going to touch it. It's soft rubber, very soft rubber. Could this thing really be from the Second World War? Yeah, look. yeah they laid the uh, end. This looks like the tip for either a fuse or the front of a artillery shell. Yeah, if you take it the other way. Here you can see the smaller end. Yeah, that's the correct way. If this is the front of the shell. See if you can find one of the shells. Okay. <laughs> How cool. That is very special just by itself. We've just been discussing whether this could be a drying machine. Because there was some kind of wheel driving this. And I think maybe there was some kind of machinery standing on top here. And then something turned that to make this conveyor belt to go round and round and round. And then it looks like some kind of heat exchanger in here. Can you see that? So it could very well be that this is a water cooled or water heated, heated heat exchanger. I think that's what it is. And then whatever was in here, was dried. That's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a dry machine of some sort. But what? Did they dry gunpowder or shell casings? Did they paint the shell casing and then push them through here so they will dry? What a mystery. Love these. Absolutely love these. These places were very secretive. 
and they were often built in full secrecy and they were kind of hidden away with camouflage canvas um, they would look like cities they would basically just be out of reach of people and the locals they were told not to talk about anything many of the locals actually had their some of their work at positions like this so they had passes to be able to go in and out as they wanted but it was very much like shh, 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 don't talk about it and uh, that's basically what the locals had to do if you start walking in that direction uh, I think you can walk for about two hours maybe before you can see the end of the forest maybe two and a half hours well I was almost giving away a very very special secret and that secret is something that we found out in the forest that is one of the entrances for the nuclear storage bunker oh yeah we found the underground Cold War nuclear bomb storage and that is going to be a very special story for you to see later but this munition plant is just one of many and who knows maybe this one actually came from there I don't know but it was just one of many that Hitler hit around in the terrain and in the uh, outskirts of uh, the forest or in the forest it, it is just amazing there are so many of these plants but this one was very special because it was, was big enough to have as you saw that railroad track system and there are still some features laying around and we might even give you some more insight in that at a later stage but I think that's enough for now so I said to you all if you watch the videos in full you get the context and there are surprises coming very often in the end and so do that do that and you're helping us out tremendously all right I will say thank you for being here for watching commenting subscribing it is greatly appreciated thumbs up to all of you kind people out there and of course to all of you patron team members thank you for being here in for us so we can go out and find these places and for all of you who donate on the PayPal thing thank you for that don't forget that super thanks thing helps us out tremendously and all I can say it's not finished we're going to show you more later but for now stay safe keep smiling and we'll see you out there later